Hello and welcome to the first video of the FP2 chapter First Order Differential Equations. On the screen some key functions you need to remember how to integrate. Pause the video now, fill this in if you've got time. The first one, increase the power by one and divide by the new power. Cosine integrates to give sine, sine integrates to give minus cosine, e to the x is the easy one, integrates to give itself, and 1 over x integrates to give natural log of x. As well as these that you have to remember, there are many given to you in the formula booklet. Under the title integration in P3 and P4, you have all of these rules. And in the P3 section, you also have some rules for differentiation that you can reverse to give these three integration rules. In this chapter, we've got four things to do. The first one is quite short, sketch a family of solution curves, and then the next three are divided amongst the videos. We're going to solve first order differential equations by separating the variables, using an integrating factor, and using substitution. You can notice here I have not written this out in its entirety. There are different ways you might see this written. Here are a few of them. Don't be confused, they all mean exactly the same thing. But before we get to first order differential equations, there are some things we need to review because all of this chapter is integration. You need to be familiar with a few things. In P3, you used the chain rule. Here, you should be able to do this quite easily to give three tan squared x, and then you know you multiply again by the derivative of tan x, which is sec squared x. Here, you need to know that you do a 1 divided by the function in the log, and then you multiply it by the derivative of that function. More than this, you need to be able to use these to go backwards, as you did in P4, to reverse these. So knowing these two results, we can see quite easily that this comes from something like this. But there's a 3 here, and there is no 3 here, so I need to take one third of this. Similarly, we can see, except for the 2, that this is this. So if I can take care of the 2, then integrating this should get me back to the natural log. So this will equal a half natural log x squared minus 3. And these are two examples of two standard results, where you've got a function times its own derivative, particularly a function raised to a power times by its own derivative. You need to be able to recognize this and write the integration directly. Here we've got a function underneath its own derivative. And again, you need to be able to recognize this and directly write that this integrates to the natural log of this function in the denominator. All of this knowledge is assumed in this chapter. You need to be familiar with all of this. You also need to be familiar with the integration by parts formula, this. You don't need to remember it, it's given on the formula sheet, but you need to be able to use it confidently. For example, x e to the x, you should be able to see that e to the x is not going to go away no matter how many times you differentiate it. So make that the v function, and the x when you differentiate it will go away, so we make that the u function. So this will give us u times v, so that will be x and the integral of e to the x is just e to the x minus the integral of e to the x times du by dx which in this case is 1 then integrate that remember to put in your constant of integration and then if you want we could simplify that to give this okay that's quite a lot of review work let's get to something new the constant of integration that we had in the previous screen means that this is a general solution. You need to be familiar with this term. It might be used in an exam question. We can represent this graphically using multiple curves, and this is called a family of solution curves. Again, this phrase is important. You might be asked to sketch a family of solution curves in an exam question. So for the equation we had on the previous screen, we had a solution e to the x, x minus 1 plus c. Now, if we want to do a family of solution curves, we need to put some numbers in for C and draw maybe four or five different graphs to show the pattern of how this looks. So there's the first one, 
second one, third one, fourth one. Having found a general solution, you might then be asked to find what is called a particular solution. Again, another term you need to know for exam questions. If you're told to find a particular solution, you will need to be given some boundary conditions so that you can find out what that solution is. In this case, if y equals 2 when x equals 0, then only one of these is correct, and it is this one here. So here are three key terms important for exam questions. A general solution means you've got a plus c constant of integration still in your equation. You don't know what it is yet. Family of solution curves means you should put a few different numbers in, draw them all, maybe four or five of them on the same sketch. A particular solution means you need to work out what that constant is given certain boundary conditions. OK, we're halfway through the video and we haven't actually talked about differential equations yet. So let's get on to this now. First order differential equations are equations that involve a dy by dx term in the equation. Second order differential equations, which we will do in the next chapter, involve a second order differential term. And while equations of these two different types might look quite similar, they have very different methods of solving them. So unfortunately, a lot of what we talk about in this chapter simply won't apply in the next chapter. So be clear which of these you're doing, first order or second order. For first order differential equations, solving it depends on its form. We've got different methods for different forms. We're going to look at three. We want to look at separating the variables in this video exact differential equations method in the next video, and reducible equations in the third video. On the overview, I mentioned integrating factors, that's to do with this, and substitution, which is what this is all about. Separating the variables is by far the easiest method, I think, because you just do pretty much what it says. So if you've got something of this form here, where you've got your differential term here, and then two functions, some function of x and some function of y, and you are able to separate them, then you go ahead and you separate them. So you're creating two integrals. You get the y function on the left by dividing through if you need to with the dy, and you bring the dx up on the right with the f of x function. Once you're here, you can just add your integration signs to give this, and you go ahead and you integrate both sides using all of the methods that you've done previously. One quick thing to note is that when you're doing two integrations, you don't normally put in two constants of integration. You would just put them on one side and call them C altogether. So maybe over here you'd have a plus A, over here a plus B. You bring A over here, combine them and call it C. You wouldn't write all of that, you would just put the C on the right hand side. And remember to put that constant in after you've done your integration, but before you start rearranging anything, if you need to rearrange it into a certain form. So to finish off, we've got two examples. Here is the first one, solve the differential equation of this, given that when x equals 1, y equals 0. So although we will find a general solution as part of our process, what we want here is a particular solution. So we go ahead and we separate out our variables. I need y plus 1 on the left. Take all of that over by dividing through so that it is a single term with the dy. Don't move the 1 by subtracting it. And take the x squared on the other side by dividing through by x squared, and also take the dx up by multiplying by dx. Be careful to multiply and divide your terms to get them on the right sides. Don't use addition or subtraction. Once it's like this, you can now add your integral symbols and integrate both sides. On the left hand side, a 1 over something, this becomes a natural log. And on the right hand side, this is minus x to the minus 1, so we've got minus 1 over x. And remember, now that we've done the integration, the constant of integration must come in at this point before I start rearranging. Here, I could work out what that constant is, because I need the particular solution, or I could rearrange first and work it out later. I'm going to work it out now. When x is 1, this is minus 1, and when y is 0, log of 1 is 0, so c is just a 1. That gives me the log of y plus 1 is equal to minus 1 over x plus 1. Now I've mentioned rearranging a couple of times, and 
generally speaking, you should rearrange to give this variable as a function of this variable. So I'm going to use my exponential function, e to the minus 1 over x plus 1. It gives me y plus 1, and then bring the 1 on the other side to be a minus 1. And this is my particular solution when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0. If I wanted the general solution, I would just have a plus c in here instead of a plus 1. Second and final example. Sketch the family of solution curves of the equation this. Obviously, to sketch the family of solution curves, I need the solution, the general solution. So I need to go through the process of solving this. I can separate the variables very easily here. So this is the method to use. We've got 1 over y dy. I will leave the minus on the right. So we have minus dx. Integrate both sides. That gives me the log of y and on the right minus x plus c. Bring all of this up as a power e to the minus x plus c. And while that's OK, it's more common to see this written as a e to the minus x, where a is equal to e to the power c. So I've done all of that work in order to sketch my family of solution curves. And if a is equal to 1, then we've got the usual e to the minus x curve, which comes down something like this. But if a is equal to 2, it goes through 2 and is a bit steeper. And if it's equal to 3, it goes through 3 and is steeper still. And I will get a slightly different looking graph if I put in a negative, so I should do a few of those as well. In this case, it will come up through minus 1, something like this, and a minus 2, a bit steeper, minus 3, steeper still. So here's my family of solution curves. The textbook has a few more examples that you can read through, but I think the idea of this is quite simple. So you can have a go now at questions from exercise 5a, and we'll look at a few more, slightly more involved methods in the next two videos. Maybe I'll see you there.